Hello, everybody. It's Pastor Jen here at the International Christian Fellowship Rome. I want to thank you for joining the online service today. As we finish summer and we move into this new season of fall and maybe new work uh, responsibilities and children's ministry and um, young adult ministry here at ICF Rome and online, I want you to know I'm praying for you. This service that you're joining today is truly a moment for you to get refilled with the power of God for the next week. So I have prayed that as you enter into worship, as you enter into listening to the word of God, that you will say to the Lord, what do I need for this week that God will make me stronger, that will make my faith the living proof to those around me? So I welcome you today and I pray that God gives you a wonderful word of encouragement as you join the service. Come on, if you know it, would you sing this with me? And what can Yeah. 
worship you, our Lord and Master. There is none like you. With one heart, with one accord, in agreement, we ascribe all the praise to your name. Take all the glory. Take all the adoration. All the honor, all the power belongs to your name. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Can you clap your hands? Can you scream? Let's be happy in the house of God. Amen. Let's take our seats for a few minutes. It's time for our tithes and our offering. And like we always say, we offer not just money, but our time, our talent. So thank you so much last week for signing up for the various ministries. If you have not been reached out to, if no one has called you, look for the person that was standing behind that table today and make sure that the commitment does not die. We are reading from Philippians chapter 1, 3 to 6. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. So that's the same message I want to give you today. Thank you for supporting ICF Rome. This is a mission. Thank you for supporting this mission. And God bless you. And as Paul is praying for the church in Philippi, for the Philippians, he's saying that being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. This is your portion today. Can we stand? We have three ways to give. You're going to come dancing in a few minutes, in a few seconds actually, on my right and on my left to put the envelopes you receive. You just put your money in the envelopes you received as you entered. But there are two more ways you can also give. You can give online. That's what I like to do. You go to our website and then you find instructions. If you are watching online, the instructions are, are on your screen right now. And then finally, our brother Bose will help if you want to give with your card. You can go to the back and to my right and just tell him how much you want to give with your card and he will help you do that. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for giving us the opportunity to give towards your kingdom. I pray that you will bless every individual corporately, even those that are not able to give today. That as people give, the blessings flow in every area of our life that we are praying to you for, that you will meet us at the point of our need. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, we also have water baptism in both services. So this morning, I'm asking Musamba if you would come. Musamba Mubanga, come up here since you're the only one. And uh, you're choosing to be baptized today. Tell us where you're from and what Jesus means to you, a little bit of what you told me. Thank you. Good morning, Chage. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> so I am from Zambia, and um, I'm going to share my testimony from what Jesus means to me. So basically, for me, Jesus is my source of guidance and inspiration representing salvation, forgiveness, and compassion. And so there are many times in my journey, in my spiritual life, and just outside there in the world where I've had to struggle, where I get discouraged to a point of almost questioning God. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel like I'm carrying so much burden. But drawing from his examples, his teachings, and the fact that he's proved to be a constant figure in my life, it has provided me uh, guidance and support, both mentally, spiritually, and physically. Yes. yes. Amen. So we are so happy. So I'm going to put this right here. And uh, Bose, our ministry assistant, is going to help you into the water. He's going to be there with you. I'm going to come right over here. And uh, I'm actually going to talk to you today about being that living proof of that um, dependable disciple. You know, this... This month is Invincible God. Say invincible. 
Remember, I said he's invincible, but he wants us to be dependable, right? Not the other way around. I'm not invincible. You're not invincible. But God is invincible. That's why Musamba can say, even when I feel like I've struggled, I sense the Lord with me. And so um, we are so happy. You can kneel down on your knees, okay? Yeah. And we're on camera, too, online, because we want, I want you to know our online family is just, we're, God is doing so many amazing things. This week, I um, realized that in the last few months, we have reached almost 400,000 people in online ministry engagement. Can somebody say praise the Lord for that? So online family, we love you. If you have not been baptized in water, I encourage you to find a local family of faith and to follow. I can't baptize you online, so you're going to have to do that somewhere or come to Rome and we will do it. But today, Musamba, you're going to It is my privilege to have watched you come here and to see the joy of the Lord. And so in obedience to what Jesus did and what he's calling you to do, it is my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. Woo, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I need a towel too. Amen. 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 Be careful. I, I, I'm so thankful for what God has done. Amen. I, I, you know, so many of you, I'm so happy you're here. I want to get to know you more. You see, when you come into God's family, you are not alone. Amen. I love that, you know, Musamba said there were times when she felt discouraged or it was heavy, but she learned to follow and listen to what the Holy Spirit says. So if you were here, how many were here last week? Let me see your hand if you were here last week. Okay, so some of you. Uh, that's good. I'm glad you're here today. We, you know, I had a punching bag up here, and that red glove demonstrates the invincible God. Amen? And that when the enemy tries to come at us, the dependable disciple takes the power of the Holy Spirit and punches back, right? We don't give up. Say, I won't give up. I want you to type it in the chat online. I won't give up. I mean it because I believe more than anything within me that this is a period of time in our world where the enemy has been relentless to make God's people back up, shrink back, hide, be afraid to be that dependable follower of Jesus Christ. I want you to know that God is faithful. Amen. He knows your name. He knows your address. He knows when you're in one country and the kids are in another country. The root of knowing God's word as it blooms forth. You know, I have a friend who I believe is going to be with us in second service, just here for literally like 24, 48 hours here in Rome. But I want to tell you guys something. She, as a young girl, was a missionary's child in another country faced a lot of very difficult things, and somewhere around, I think she said eight years old. So zero to eight, she was memorizing scripture. She was in church all the time. She was seeing people be baptized. She was singing in the little kids' camp stuff that they had. And somewhere around eight, tragedy happened in her life. And she decided at eight years old that she couldn't trust anybody or God, and she walked away. And very dear family of my family, I remember praying for her for so many years. And she said, I can't even remember exactly what the catalyst was, but she had a lot of brokenness because, you know, the things that the world tries to tempt you with will not fill the void that only Jesus can fill. I'll say it again. The things that the world will tempt you with, money, fame, the wrong kind of love, it will not fill the void that only Jesus can fill. And she said what brought her back was she had a foundation of faith in her life. She would hear those memory verses. She would push them away and say, not today, I'm not interested. But she could not stop the word of God 
from playing over in her mind. Now today she has a beautiful memory, um, ministry called Beyond the Silence. She's traveled around the globe to minister to others that Jesus is the one who washes us brand new and makes us clean. So this morning, as we talk about invincible God and dependable disciple, I felt like it was important for me to share with you why baptism. What is that in the life of the dependable disciple? I want you to see this definition. Invincible God means too powerful to ever be defeated. Can you imagine? He's not in a tomb Nobody got to kill him, and then that was the end of him. His son resurrected on the third day. Somebody say amen. He is invincible. The death couldn't hold him. Pilate and Caesar couldn't silence him. Amen. He is not ever going to be defeated. When you have a struggle and you feel defeated, the Holy Spirit is right there saying, don't let go. I will not be defeated. But what is the definition of a dependable disciple? Reliable, trustworthy, constant, unswerving, steadfast. Steadfast. You see, when we are in this tug of war, the enemy will not stop until the day each of us stands before heaven's gates. And the Holy Spirit and Jesus and the angels and God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit say, did you know my name? Did you proclaim my name? Did you walk it out? Come on in. Amen? So the enemy of your soul knows if he can stop your reliability. You see, there are how many ever been tired? Tell the truth. You ever been tired? I'm the only one. Come on. Yeah, we've been tired, right? How many of you ever been sick? Hmm? I want to say something. How many of you have ever been healed? Look around. Look around. How many of you have ever pressed through and felt God give you a new victory? Look. See, it's not just me. See? Online, I bet you're raising your hand. So I want you to know that why would the enemy want to stop your reliability? Because that steadfastness is what's going to get you across the finish line. That steadfastness is what's going to make you stand back up when you feel you got knocked down. And so today, I want you to know some things about this disciple of Christ. A disciple is one who accepts and follows the teachings of Jesus. I'm proud of Jesus. I'm I'm honored to carry his name. Amen? I'm thankful that he's my Savior. I'm, I'm honored that I can say to you that when I've been weak, he's been strong. I'm thankful that I can say to you, like it says in John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's Jesus, the Word. Jemima said, the Word that is preached has changed her life. So I want you to understand that that disciple, the one that I want each of us to be, is the one who is willing to say, you know, my Bible's on here right now, but you might have a paper Bible. I have my big paper Bibles, too, that I write all over in. I believe the Bible. Can you say that? I believe the Bible. I want you to believe the Bible. It's God's holy word. It's endured translations and years and years of, of manuscripts. It's true. It's real. Do not let the enemy tell you it's only for back in the day. Do not let the enemy tell you there's only part of it that's true. I mean, that's more convenient, right? If I only believe that he loves me, he'll give me peace that passes understanding. But I don't also have to acknowledge that I have to live pure and holy. I have to ask him to forgive me. He didn't go to that cross for nothing. He went to that cross so that we could be forgiven. A disciple is one, you all demonstrated this last week, it was so powerful, one who is eager to serve the Lord with joy and love. A disciple, I want you to imagine, uh, I wish I could have had the whole discipleship, disciples up here like in, in full Bible costume. I want you to imagine Peter, his brothers, you know, they were fishermen, right? I don't know if you've ever been down on the sea, Uh, by the boats where the fishermen are. It's kind of stinky. I mean, the fish is messy when they capture the fish and they cut them. It's all yucky. 
I want you to imagine those fishermen down there, and they are working hard. This is their livelihood. But Jesus comes along, and he says, hey, come with me. I want you to leave that, what you thought was important. I want you to follow me, and I will make you a fisher of men. Now, Peter was not perfect. He followed Jesus. He said, Lord, you know I love you. But yet he denied Jesus three times. He wasn't perfect. See, the enemy wants you to think when you're not perfect, forget about it. You're done. But Jesus, God, he knows all things, right? He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. He's omniscient. He's all-knowing. So can you imagine? He sees that man and those fishermen. He's like, come be with me. I need you to be close to me. I need you to walk with me. I need you to minister with me. Knowing, in his God knowing, this one in my group is going to deny me. He didn't say, you know what, never mind, Peter. You just go ahead and stay there in that messy fish. Hear me. Jesus knows what we're going to walk through. And he still says, come be with me. Come follow me. So can you imagine how Peter felt after he was redeemed again and he came back to the Lord? The Bible says Peter preached after that and 3,000 people gave their heart to God. Somebody say amen. I mean, that is a witness that Jesus forgave him and the power of God was upon him. A disciple is one who is always willing to pick up their nets what does the net represent? Represents the thing that you hold dear, right? The thing that you hold dear. Okay, God, I really, I really love my, for the musicians on the stage, I really love my music. But they were willing to pick up their nets and say, God, if you want it, you can use it however you want. I'm going to answer the assignment and I'm going to follow where you lead. Pretty much all of us are in this room because we followed where God led. Amen. We're here. We, as Jemima said, we don't all have family here in this country or even on this continent. But we were willing. You were willing to follow God in your job, in your university, in your pursuit of dreams being fulfilled. But now you're here. And Jesus is saying, I want you to let go of those things that you thought were going to satisfy you. I want you to follow my word, my way, my heart. Know the heart of God. A disciple is one who is always available and present in times of need. I want to thank you for everyone who serves. The online group, I just almost texted you yesterday as I was tallying up those things. I can't remember. I think it was something like uh, 25,000 that are actually like fully engaged so there's a reach and that's just in one category but there's a reach of people that are watching full views you know look around you can see how many people are in this room right now but online I want you to know I know you're there I'm praying for you in the last couple weeks on average we've been having about 1,500 to 1,800 watching the sermon online we're glad you're there see we're not the only ones It matters to God that people hear the word of the Lord and follow him. Because when I can't be there, when ICF Rome can't be there, Jesus is always there. Amen? So he is looking for disciples. So I want to say thank you to the online team. Because a disciple is one who is always available and present in times of need. It is, I know Prince mentioned last week, that that availability matters to God. I want you to know that. So today, as we think about water baptism, I want you to know that water baptism is an outward declaration of an inward change. An outward declaration of an inward change. Now, some were baptized as small children. Some had a choice as a small child. Some had a sprinkling. Some... um, you know, didn't have a choice. The parents just took them into a church somewhere. But Jesus demonstrated for us how to be baptized. He let John the Baptist baptize him. Amen? You just follow it in Scripture. And so what he was saying is, and John said, you know, I'm not worthy to even tie your sandals. And Jesus said, no, I want 
to make this public declaration that I have come to be fully immersed in the call and the work of my father on my life. By being immersed fully in water, I want you to know it also symbolizes the grave. Jesus went into the grave, but he came up out of the grave. Amen? When we go, we don't have to go in the grave. Hallelujah. <laughs> we don't have to have grave clothes. Until we get to heaven, these are our clothes. Also, can I just say today, I have one of your country costumes from Kenya. I'm so thankful. I'm going to baptize a couple people from Kenya. I actually have many beautiful dresses from all over the world that you have given me and in honor of mission sunday in a couple weeks i'm going to be wearing my international clothing for the next few weeks okay so i want you to start thinking about what are you going to wear on international day for that one service only i want you to be thinking about the food that you're going to bring because you know i probably won't bring the food um, because that's just not me i might bring chips and salsa from texas but um so I want you to understand something, though. There is an outward declaration of an inward change. And when we come to Jesus, we say to the Lord, I want to follow you like you did. It symbolizes that the believer identifies with the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that their sins are buried, amen, and they are washed clean. That's why when they come out of that water, they praise the Lord. By being raised out of the water, the believer proclaims their hope and faith in the resurrection of Jesus and understanding that you too shall rise into eternal life after physical death because of Jesus' work on the cross. We, we serve communion every month here. You are free to take communion if you have made that commitment to follow Jesus as your savior. Matthew 28, 19 and 20 says, it is a public demonstration that you are a follower of Christ and it symbolizes a spiritual cleansing, a spiritual washing. In Matthew chapter three, the baptism of Jesus. So I hope you're taking notes. If you're typing in the chat, type in Matthew chapter three. I want you to read about it. I want you to say, Lord, do I, do I need to be baptized? Did something happen to me when I was five or six, but now life has changed me? I am sold out to Jesus, and the next time there's an opportunity, in fact, there will be another opportunity in second service, just saying, um, if you need to see me in between the services, this was Jesus' act of identifying with you and I. You know, I love it that sometimes as leaders, as dependable disciples, we can't ask other people to do what we're not willing to do. Amen? I mean, I'm here two Sundays, two services every Sunday. So for the ones who join me, two services every Sunday, thank you. For the ones who join me faithfully in one service or the other, thank you. For the ones who join online, thank you. But I want you to understand, Jesus did not say, go do that. He said, follow me and I will make you that disciple, that dependable disciple. So he demonstrated it. Jesus told John to proceed with the baptism in Matthew chapter 3, verse 15. It says, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill righteousness. In this baptism, Jesus was also putting his stamp of approval on John's ministry and beginning his own during that period. As Jesus came up from the water, the Spirit, the Father spoke from heaven, and the Holy Spirit descended on him, right? And said, this is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. We have a, a beautiful stained glass art in the prayer room with a dove. So I took some pictures today with some of the baptism candidates because I want them to know the Holy Spirit is descending on you. He's saying, you're my beloved disciple. In you I'm well pleased pleased. I want you to look at Acts chapter 2, verse 36 to 38. It says, so let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. Peter's words pierced their hearts, Peter, and they said to him and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? And Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins 
turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In Matthew 28, verse 19 through 20, it says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. What? Baptizing. Say baptizing. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. They don't have this one on the screen, I don't think, but Colossians 2 says, For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with him you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. Matthew, Mark chapter 16, verse 16 says, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Now, I want you to see this verse for a minute because we don't believe that. If you're not baptized, you won't go to heaven. It says, whoever believes, whoever does not believe will be condemned, right? It says, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. So he's wanting to say to you, believe and be baptized. But he's also saying it's really important, the believe part. Whoever does not believe is the one who is condemned. Whoever does not believe in Jesus Christ. Now, I know you're probably like, Pastor Jen, that's tough. It is tough because this world is tough. And I want you to make heaven your home. I want you to live an abundant life. Somebody say amen. amen. I want you to be able to say what Revelations 2, 3 through 5 says. You have persevered and endured hardships for my name. And you have not grown weary. Yet, I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you did not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Consider how far you've fallen and do the first things you did at first. It's talking about baptism in that passage. That's why we can say, yes, if you got baptized when you were 16, but then maybe 10 years or 20 years of life happened. Like my friend that's going to be in second service. And you realize, wow, I need to repent and do my first works again. I want to be washed again. Um, it's, it's, there should be no nervousness to say I believe in Jesus. I mean, I think it would be really cool if we could all be baptized. I, I love Jesus. Amen? Come on, don't get scared. You're like, don't baptize me today. I want you to know something. I, there are moments in our lives when we say, Jesus, you are all I need. You are all I have. I will follow you. I will leave my net, that thing that makes me comfortable. And I will follow you into the unknown, into the uncomfortable, because you are my God. So what can you intentionally choose to be today? Dependable. Obedient to his commands in scripture. I hope you take a picture or write it down. These are the things a dependable disciple needs to be. Trustworthy. That when you give your word, you honor it. Even if you have to say, I don't know. That's the honest answer. I don't know. Or let me pray about it and I'll get back to you. Or I made a mistake. I believe that a dependable disciple is constant. You see, Jesus brought those disciples around him. They followed him everywhere. They followed him in the crowds of 5,000. They followed him out on the sea. They stayed by him. And even though they went to the garden to pray with him and they fell asleep, they were there, right? And what I want to say to you, get off the roller coaster. Get off the roller coaster. It doesn't mean that every day might not be a tug of war. You know, I've used the rope, and I've said, keep holding the rope. Last week, we had several people up here, and I showed how if one person lets go, there's a gap, right? So sometimes when you're weak, Jemima, she came, and somebody gave her a hug, gave her a word of encouragement, blessed her. Musamba, when she felt discouraged, she came here. She felt the presence of the Lord. Because when you come into the family of faith, it's like giving the devil a black eye, right? I love you. But I want to say to you, I'm, I'm not telling you anything that the Holy Spirit's not also speaking to me. Yesterday, I woke up and I heard the Holy Spirit say, embrace the day. 
Embrace the day. Embrace the moments. You know, there's a lot of unknowns. We have unknown document stuff. We have unknown job things. We have unknown university things. We have unknown future things. But there is nothing unknown to the omnipotent God. So why do I let the unknown put me on that up and down roller coaster? Why do we let that happen? A dependable disciple. Maybe I might get tired. (coughs) Maybe I might fall asleep. But I'm going to be right there by Jesus. A dependable disciple, it's not on here. You can be stable with God's help. That's on there. But say Jesus. Come on, y'all. Say Jesus. Jesus. Say it again. Say it again. Come on, stronger. Jesus. Jesus. It's, it's not a hard name. It's not a hard word. They're going to sing Yeshua. Because I want you to know that when you can't, God can. When you can't, God can. And a dependable disciple does, you know, when I feel, if I'm on, you know, oh, Lord, what's this day going to bring? And I wake up and I hear the Holy Spirit as if he was in my room. Embrace the day. Okay, Lord, what does that mean? Just embrace the moments. But I don't say my name, Jennifer, Jennifer, Jennifer. I don't do that. When I need something, Beverly, I say Jesus. I wake up in the night and I say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeshua be with me. Yeshua be with you. I think of your faces. I think of your names. And I call them out before God. I say, God, whoever's needing you right now in this moment, whoever's unsure right now, I want them to be a dependable disciple no matter how hard it is. Because there is victory ahead and you are not doing life just for you. Those disciples fed those 5,000 with Jesus, right? But you know what? When they showed up, They were missing something. There was not enough to feed. They did not come to Jesus. Well, they did. But, you know, and say, send all these people away. They kind of said that, right? (laughs) We don't have enough food. But Jesus didn't go, oh, yeah, you're right. Send them away. Nobody cooked today. He didn't do that. He said, take what you do have and start passing it out. See, when I was in Madrid last week, I heard speaker talking about there wasn't enough there was this famine of of faith maybe in our world today we have a famine of faith i call it out today i say i want to be the one who says i'm not going to do this anymore i might do a little bit like this because you know i'm emotional i'm passionate jesus wept he turned over the tables when he got angry He said, you can't even pray with me for one hour. I don't think he was like, you know, I'm really sorry you can't pray with me. We don't read the sound of his voice. We just read the words. But I can imagine if I knew I was about to go be crucified and I had gathered my closest disciples, mentors, helpers around me. I said, it's going to be hard. Can you just pray with me? I need to depend on you. And I came back and like, you know, you were scrolling, not praying. I might feel a little bit like you can't even focus on this prayer for one hour. Sometimes I can hear the Holy Spirit say it to me. Stop scrolling. Stop looking for something else. Go to the Word of God. Yes, Jemima. Go to the Word. There's nothing like the power of His Word. Stand to your feet all over this house. Baptism is an outward declaration of an inward change. Proverbs 28.1 says, The wicked flee, though no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. I'm calling out boldness in you today. You know, it might not sound like, it might sound like Jesus. Jesus. I'm going to be bold enough when I'm afraid. Can you whisper it? See, we have this worldly concept of what does it mean to be bold? It means that in my spirit, come on, devil, try to take me out one more time. I think uh, Linda prayed on Wednesday night, devil, you should have taken me out when you had the chance because now I'm going to be bold in my faith. I'm going to decree and declare that Jesus is Lord. He is Yeshua. Amen? He is Yeshua. He is our mighty God. So I encourage you.
encourage you to bless those who have chosen to declare in baptism now and in second service as well. And if God is speaking to you, we'll have another baptism. We will have another baptism in about 45 minutes. If you want to talk to me? I want to pray. Because I don't ever want any of us to say, you know what? I did it when I was a child. I said, Jesus, forgive me. I did that 20 years ago. I don't need to do it again. Really? Tell me what you're doing because I've made mistakes in the last 20 years. I'm not perfect. And Jesus said, light and darkness can't dwell together. You know, I was thinking about how God gives us the ability to choose. Even from the very beginning when he made Adam and Eve, he gave them a choice. Even in the beginning. He made everything beautiful, but he gave them a choice. Here, I'm giving you everything, but there is this tree. I don't want you to eat of it. He gave them a choice. They disobeyed his instructions. But he's the great redeemer. Amen? He's the great redeemer. He doesn't force us to follow him. But he does say, choose you today who you will serve. Choose you today who you will serve. I want you to bow your heads for a moment. They're going to start to sing. I want you to say to the Lord right now, Jesus, I need you. In your own words, you can say it out loud, you can say it in your heart. I want you to know he wants to be the Lord of our lives. He's faithful. I worship you, Lord, and if that's you, and you would say, I want Yeshua in my life. I want you to begin to lift your hand. I want you to begin to sing with them. It's easy. It's just Yeshua. But God, I need you. I need you right now in Jesus' name. Come on, y'all. Lift your hand. Say, Jesus, I need you. I need you. I need you, Lord God. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. we hear the word of the Lord, he does something in our hearts and minds. So I want to invite you right now, maybe there's been something in your life that has pulled you away from the love of Christ. Maybe you didn't remember that you are loved by God, that you are the proof that he is with you. And so right now I invite you to pray with me that Jesus would take control of every area and give everything back to God. Stop holding on to it. Put it in his hands and let him take care of it. So I invite you right now to pray this prayer with me to make Jesus number one in every aspect of your life. Dear Lord Jesus, you say it right there. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you right now to take control of every area of my life. I give you all my fears, all my doubts, all my mistakes. I receive your forgiveness, Lord. I receive your new mercy. And from this day forward, for the rest of my life, I will cling to Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I also want to pray with those who have, are in need of a miracle. We have seen, really, the lame walk, the blind eyes open. We have seen prodigals come back home. And maybe today you've been watching online and you just waited till this last prayer because you needed the move of God in your family, in your situation, in your circumstance. I want you to know that as we pray, the power of the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. The angels in heaven are standing on guard and the Lord says, send them over there. Send them over there. Put a shield around that one. So agree with me right now for your miracle in motion. God is doing it. I want your faith to come alive. I don't want you to doubt or wonder if God sees you or hears you because he does. So Father, right now, I pray in the name of Jesus that that everyone who calls ICF Rome online and on campus, their church, that they would know they're not alone. They're a part
part of this family of faith where people are praying for them around the world, across the seas. I pray for the one who needs cancer healed. I pray for the one who needs diabetes healed. I pray for the one whose shoulders and hips are having joint and bone problem in the name of Jesus. I pray for the one who has turmoil in their family, that the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, would flow in that home right now, Lord God. You know the circumstances. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Emmanuel, God with us. So I want you to agree with me. You are my Jehovah Emmanuel. You are my Jehovah Rapha, my healer. You are my Jehovah Shalom, my peace. You are Jehovah Emmanuel. You are with me. So God, I bless your people. I pray that as we go into our workplaces, our learning places, our family places, that we would walk in with a new joy, a new hope, and a new peace that God's got this, and I am the living proof that God is at work. I love you. I thank you for being a part of all that we're doing here. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for the ways that you participate on Wednesdays and on Sundays. I love you. I pray you have safe travel wherever you're moving around, and that we'll see you next week online.